hours. That is so important. Someone's watching yeah. this now. A lot of pastors watch this program, Jonathan. And, and I, I want you to know this, brother. If you're watching this today and you're in a, a, an internal panic, when you're, yeah. when the doors yeah. aren't opening and you're, and you're in that mode of, oh, my God, oh, my God, I know I'm called, but I don't know what to do. The worst exactly. thing you can do is panic. Panic pushes right. things away from you. Panic delays stuff. And um, yeah. that's why the scripture, be still and know that I am God. I have been in my yeah. circumstance many times when a need has come or something's taking place. And I've tried to do it by myself and I've tried to push things. And, 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 and let me tell you something. I have a, a great mentor of mine for many years when I was a wee boy in Scotland was a man called Arthur Burt. And um, he was one of the strangest men I've ever met and one of the most godly men I've ever met, both at the same time. He would literally knock on our door at 7 o'clock in the morning in Scotland. And he'd been in England or Africa or wherever, and God says, go there. And he just, he just went. He died a number of years ago in his, in his 90s, late 90s, I believe. But he, this, this, was his, this was his statement, uh, Jonathan. You can't fix the fixer. Mm. You can't fix the fixer. Mm. That's and good. God has a plan for you that he is out working. Yeah. I was listening to talking about your music teacher. My mom sent me to a music teacher in, in a little town in Scotland. And I was there for two weeks. And she gave me, she says, give this letter to your mommy. So I went back in those days, you could walk home and it, it, was, it was safe. So I walked all the way home and I walked in and I'm holding this envelope out in front of me because I'm proud that the teacher has given me an envelope to give to my mom. And she, I handed, I says, Mrs. Ellis wants you to have this letter, mom. So she opened the thing and she began to read it thinking it was a positive thing. And Mrs. Ellis says, dear Mrs. Cameron, Philip has no musical ability. Don't waste your money or my time. Thank you, Mrs. Ellis. <laughs> and my mother read that out to me. And um, it broke my heart because my dad was traveling. My older sister, Wendy, traveled with him. She played the accordion, which was the instrument of our, of, of our day. And uh, my mom says, well, you just stay home with, with me and let your sister, Wendy, travel. <laughs> and that was like, Jonathan, that was like a death sentence because your gift and your calling are, are intertwined. God doesn't give you a gift yeah. not to use it. If you had been a lawyer, you, I'm sure you would have been a brilliant lawyer, but you would have been a miserable brilliant lawyer sitting at the piano exactly. weeping at night in your in your in your luxury home crying over the opportunity <laughs> of of life to be That's missed right. and uh, yeah. when i was when i was eight years of age same same year uh, my sister would play this accordion i would say to her let me play let me try no don't you break it don't and uh one day she 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 had a date with a, a guy called george lemon in our town and she was late and she left her accordion out in the kitchen. And as soon as I saw her leave, I grabbed the accordion and ran upstairs to my bedroom, locked the door. And I put this accordion on, eight years of age. And I knew I was called, strangest thing. And I said, Jesus, yeah. I need you to help me, please, Jesus. And I opened the button at the top and I put my hands on the keyboard. I've been watching her play and I've been trying to memorize some of the things that she had done. And I played instantly. I mean, I literally just started playing and wow. um, I had no idea. I, I'm not even, I don't even call myself a musician. I, you know, I, I won't even sing except Pastor Bessa makes me sing when I'm in your church, but I don't even sing anymore. <laughs> but I had no idea that God would use us as the Camerons when we came from Scotland to oh, America music. with praise music. We oh. brought the first praise music to America. Yeah. And songs that we sang were the ones that ushered in the charismatic movement and all that stuff that happened in the 60s Amazing. and 70s. All because God chose the least likely. And um, so yeah. all of us, all of us, if you're watching today as a pastor, rejection is part of the process. Disappointment is mm -hmm. part of the process. Judgment, people saying you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, yeah. you're not whatever it is. But if you understand you're called of God, if you have the anointing in you, that is a representation of the calling upon you. So yeah. if you're in a situation just now, Pastor, and it seems that things aren't going well with the church, you may have lost your church. I don't know. In this pandemic that we're living in, I'm hearing from pastors all the time. 
Uh, one area I was, I was talking to, 25% of the churches have closed down. That's one mm. thing. But God stands above everything. And, and what I, I want you to get from this today is if you're in a situation and you are filled with despair, listen to what Jonathan's saying, listen to what I'm saying, that you're, you're not stuck. You're paused yeah. until God opens the door for you.